Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. Especially if my health keeps stopping me from uploading like it has been. Pleasing all the rash on my chest. I'll just, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But, I am still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. And hopefully you are watching me in black and white right now. Fear not. Glory's Technicolor is but a few moments away. And unlike the Wizard of Oz, there's no houses being dropped on witches to steal their shoes. Pretty though they are. Shoes. Right. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you have read any of it, the description. That this is me trying out the latest palette from Beauty Bay called the Wilderness palette. So, if you want to find out exactly what this baby looks like, what colours I've used to create this fabulous look, and how well she performs, you know the drill. Some of the sloths here. It's that time. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, right I'm back from the intro. Um, it's been a considerable time since I last filmed. Um, I did explain in the last few films that I uploaded that uh, the doctors were trying me on some different penicillin and they prescribed two different types, one that I'd had before, one that I'd not had before, to be taken simultaneously. And the one that I'd not had before, apparently I'm allergic to. Um, it caused really severe itchiness to the point that, I mean, this is more than two weeks since I stopped taking it. And you can see I'm still covered in blondes and stuff. Um, and I've since discovered I've had to cut all of my nails down. Because um, at night, if any of the um, the rash or the scabbed area had rough edges, I would pick at it at night. <laughs> so, turns out I might have dermatillomania as well. Great. Marvellous. Um, so yeah, I had to cut all my nails down. But... Um, I'd got quite a bit up, sort of, round my neck and jawline as well. So I obviously didn't want to put makeup on over it. Um, and I was waiting for that to calm down before I tried that again. So, today's going to be a bit of a get ready with me, really. Um, I'm also going to be trying out this new Wilderness palette from Beauty Bay. Um, I've got a couple of Beauty Bay palettes and so far I've really liked them. So the Wilderness palette, if you've not already seen it, I'm pretty sure you have, looks like that. Um, and it really appeals to me. I love this teal row. I love this grungy green row. Um, this more warm toned row is an interesting contrast to the rest of the palette, which to me leans more on the cool side. So let's just see what we can create, really. You know what I'm like. I just, um, I don't really have a plan. I just start dipping into things. I've not even t 
touched this yet so I don't even know what any of the colours are like, how they perform or anything. I'm just going to dive straight in, totally, totally blind on what they're like. Normally I will at least swatch a couple of the shadows but no, I'm going to go straight in. Um, although this is a get ready with me, I'm still going to include the bit about eye shapes which I'll include in just a minute um, and I will still zoom in really close for um, the times that I'm putting colour on my eyes so you can see what's happening um, in terms of what I've done to my face so far washed, moisturised, SPF'd and the primer that I used I used a combination of the e.l.f. Um, blemish fighting putty primer on the salicylic acid in which I used in areas where I'd had the rash and the rest of the face I have actually got a little sample size of the Bobbi Brown face base so I've tried that today um, so yeah here's the clip and at the other end of the clip I'll be there to apply some pigments to my eyelids. See you in a couple of seconds. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over mm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away 
out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, okay, I've had a couple of people ask to see how I apply my Crime Pebble Primer. So I'll get a flat brush first and just bung it all on quite haphazardly to be quite fair. I like using the cotton Blank page cotton, which does a number of different shades. Um, cotton obviously is the lightest because it's white. At the other end of the spectrum, you've got a deep chocolate brown and a black, and then in the middle, you've got some skin tone shades. So, whatever your preference is, you should be able to find one that works. And obviously, you know, use my discount code, save a bit of dollar. Then I get a, a floofy brush and just blend it all in and this also takes off any excess that you don't need, it spreads it evenly across the whole lid area and as I've said before with this you don't have to set it or anything it's, it's it applies as a cream but it dries instantly to like a powder so you don't have to set it which is great right I think I'm going to start off on the teal row and I'm going to go into mint. I'm using my Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush. I'm a bit annoyed with them at the moment. Um, I went onto the UK site that I'd been getting them from and um, the site had a thing saying oh we're no longer going to be selling them from here we're going to sell them from the American site and we're going to include UK as one of the shipping options and I went across to their site in America and they hadn't put the shipping options on yet but either way it's going to end up costing me more which is really annoying because I'd, I'd recommended these brushes to so many people okay this has gone on really quite nicely I'm doing the Viennese Waltz blend obviously, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. Long term viewers will know that I do this instead of the windscreen wiper like this, because you know I'm 47 years old, I've lost over 200 pound in weight, so you know, the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know slim teenagers that have a similar issue. I've been super tempted with the, um, is it a high tide palette by Colourpop, the teal one? So I'm hoping that the teals in here will um, stop me from craving that particular one. 
because I've also got the teals in um, the Kaleidos electric, electro teal or electro power dye or something. Just using a clean washcloth to clean this brush off. And then I'll just go in with another colour. I used to use a colour switch but it's far too harsh on the bristles of your brush. Okay, I'm going to go into Forest, which is the deeper teal shade. It's so difficult for me not to go into those grungy greens, but I, I do that a lot. And I've got quite a few palettes that are that kind of colour scheme. So I'm trying to do something a little bit different this time. How's your day been? Has it been good? I hope it has. Long term viewers will remember um, my tooth abscess issues that I had at the beginning of this year when I looked like a chipmunk. Um, and I had to go private to a dentist to get it sorted out. And I'd been looking, I'd not had an NHS dentist for about four years now, four, four and a half years I suppose. And um, I finally found an NHS dentist, great. Of course it happens to be sort of miles away from where I live. So the first appointment that I managed to make with them I had to cancel because I was in so much pain on the day. I knew I couldn't drive that far and then drive back again. Um, and obviously hubby doesn't drive, so... Okay, I like this. I'm going to go back in with the lighter one. I'm going to clean this brush off. I'm going to go back in with the lighter one because it looks like I've lost some of that. So let's just... Build that back up again on the edge there. There we go. So, I had another appointment Monday this week. Drive all the way out there. My nerves were in such a state. I've always been a nervous, very, very nervous patient because I had a really bad experience with a school dentist and then had a bad experience having a wisdom tooth out and all those things combined. I just, I'm not good with dentists, I'll be perfectly honest. So I'm like, right, okay. Let's do this. You can do this. I'm just going to change brushes and I'm going to go from the crease brush to the eyeshadow brush. This one is uh, still rounded but it's it's oval rather than being circular. So it will help me stay a little bit tighter through the crease area. I'm going to go into Twilight which is like the navy blue from the top row. Um, yeah, so I got all the way out there. Ended up getting stuck behind a tractor for six miles, which was lovely. And the road was the kind that was a lot of curves in it, so I couldn't overtake if there was a bend in front of me. And then the one time that it was a reasonably straight road, there was a dip and a crest of a hill. And I contemplated it and then thought, no, because there could be anything the other side of that. And it's just as well I didn't, because seconds after thinking, no, I'm not going to do that, a really great car came steaming over, doing way more than the speed limit. So, if I'd gone for it, he would have had me. So, yay. 
and the tractor was was it had got two things it was going towing behind it. Looked like a rotavator and a seed miller or something. So it wasn't even like it was a normal length tractor, it was like a double, triple length to overtake, so I had to be sensible. So instead of getting there and having what I thought was going to be 10-15 minutes to be able to sit in the car and calm myself down before going in, I had to go straight in as soon as I got there. Great. Um, filled in the form, the receptionist was lovely. Got into the room, got in the chair, talked through all the bits and pieces, what meds are you on, that took a while. And they said, right, put the bib on me. And said, okay, let's, let's uh, raise the chair, tilt your back and, and have a look. Because obviously, one of the issues that I had over particularly over lockdown. Um, the medication that I'm on, the morphine, etc., weakens your teeth. Um, and I'd had quite a few fillings fall out over lockdown. And of course, as soon as the filling goes, the, the sides of the tooth are not supported anymore. And because I was still having to, you know, consume food, um, well, some people would say, you could, uh, could you stop taking that? Um, the teeth have snapped off down to the, the jawline, basically. So, I know I'm going to have to have quite a few at the back here pulled. So I'm sitting there. And the chair goes up. And the chair goes down. And they push the chair up and put the chair down. And put the chair up and put the chair down. Chris is grinning. And I'm like, what the hell is he grinning for? This is not fun. I was feeling sick anyway with nerves. And then going up and down on this like a bloody fairground ride was not helping. So I'm like, uh, what's happening? And they said, oh, well, we, we, can, we can raise and lower the seat. I'm like, yeah, I can feel that. But we can't get the back to recline. And I'm like, right. Uh, so what do we do? And they said, oh, well, we'll go and check to see if the other, one of the other consulting rooms is free. I'm like, okay. And came back and said, no, unfortunately, the consulting room is being used. So I'm like, right. So now what? I said, do we have to do this another day or because I was my nerves were completely shot and having gone up and down and up and down and up and down I mean Chris afterwards we I follow um quite a few cat accounts I like cats and they, watching cats calms me when I'm here on my own and having a bit of a panic attack um and one of them is uh, the account is Balam says and there's there's four or five cats in the household um, but Balam is, is the main one and he's a, an oriental short hair so he's very vocal which if anybody knows cats they'll know that you know oriental short hairs they, they like to make their voice heard um, <clears throat> I'm just going to tidy up the edges there just got a pad with some micellar water on Yeah, so Hubby and I both love Balan with his propensity for white slime, which is what he calls yoghurt. Or what is that he calls yoghurt? Um, and uh, Chris said, do you remember that one where Balan was, was on the lap and was sort of like, his legs were being waved up and down. I said, yeah, he goes, that's what you look like in that bloody chair. I'm like, oh, gee, thanks. That, that's, that's a great image. Cheers. And he's like, sorry, love. He said, but I had a real problem not laughing. He said, it was so, so amusing. And I'm like, huh, okay, thanks. <laughs> and 
you know, I feel like I'm going up and down on one of those, you know those fairground rides that sort of zoom you up and then bounce and bounce and bounce. I felt like I was on one of those. And Chris said that my because I'd sort of swung one of my feet off of the jet because I was all mentally I was out there anyway, and they're still up and down and up and down. He said my poor little feet were bouncing like balam, and I'm just like, oh, thanks for that. If I can, I'll put a clip in. So that I will have put a clip in. So you know what I'm talking about. But. Um, yeah, so he saw Balan with the bouncing and I'm feeling like I'm on some kind of terror ride. So, right, I've got a flat packer brush here. This is a, it's a Voldemorphy, but it's from a set. So as usual, they never put the number on it, which is really helpful. Um, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, but once I've got the pigment on there, I'll be spraying it with a bit of this. You can use any liquid. Um, you can use priming spray, you can use a moisturising spray like a, a MAC or a Mario Badescu. Um, you can use setting spray, finishing spray. You can even just, if you've got a bottle with a sprayer that you like, wash it out, save it and just put fresh water in each time you're going to use it. Now, the question is, which shimmers do I want to use? I am actually going to swatch the shimmers on the back of my hand just so I've got an idea of what sort of shades I have available to me. Yes, I'm wiping my hand on the trouser leg. Right, so that's the shimmers. Really pretty. So, look. Might use this one, or this one. With a bit of that champagne gold, perhaps. Swipe this off the back of my hand because I don't know what I'm like. I'm such a clutch, I'll end up wiping it up the side of my face. So, yeah, I said, right, what are we doing then? What's, what's happening? What's going on? Um, I'm going to go into a ray, which is the champagne shimmer on the top row. Oh, it's very soft. I'm not sure I'm going to need to spritz it actually. It's like a super shock shadow. So I'm not actually going to wet it, I'm going to try it dry first. Ooh, look at that, that's pretty. Yeah, so I'm like, mentally I'm, I'm checked out, I'm done. Um, I'm as nervous as hell anyway. And then to have the damn chair malfunction. And um, they said, yeah, I think what we're going to have to do is book you in another time. Um, with this eye, I've got super deep creasing just here, if you see. This is on my eye was pulled around when I was like five or six years old. And the issue that I have is I now have to break my own rule about never stretching the lid out. Because if I don't, what happens is this packs loosely into the crease and then ends up falling into my eye during the day. But I'm going to show you how I do it so I cause as little damage as possible. So I stretch the lid out only as far as to straighten the creases and then apply the shimmer as quickly and efficiently as I can. 
making sure it's really well blended onto the lid. And very gently put the lid back and then add any extra. You can see this lid moves a lot more than the other one did. But yeah, so I'm like, right, what, what are we going to do then? What's, what's happening? And they said, yeah, we are going to have to do this another time. Shall I go and talk to the receptionist to make sure she puts you into the other room? I'm like, mm, okay. So of course, I'm now saying to Chris as I'm walking down the corridor, oh, I bet that's my weight causing the problem. I bet that's why they want me to go into the other room. I bet it's a higher weight chair or something. And Chris went, Ange, you were in a dentist chair at the beginning of the year and you've lost weight since then. So if that was the case, that one wouldn't have worked either. And I was like, oh yeah, actually, you got a point. That's, if anyone who's overweight will know, you automatically assume if something's going wrong, it's because of your weight. It's just, it's just how your mind goes, unfortunately. Um, do you know what, I'm really tempted to put that lime on there. Shall I go for the moss? Mm, that looks like Christmas, doesn't it? I think I might go for the lime. So yeah, so I've now got to go back. So I sort of struggle back out to the car, sat in the car for a bit, puffed and blowed. Got myself composed so I was okay to drive. And Chris went, Why don't we go and get a Costa coffee, love? That'll cheer you up. I'm like, Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bless him, he knows how to cheer me up. So, that was my rather abortive trip to the dentist. But looking back on it now, I guess it's kind of funny. I was sort of looking like Blam. Just going to blend where those two meet. And then kind of buff it into the blue at the edge there. Yeah, I like that actually. I might add a little bit of the moss. Just a minute. Oh. Yeah, although using these dry, you're getting as good an effect as if you were using them wet. If you use them wet, you're less likely to get fallout like I've just got there. But I always do my foundation afterwards anyway, so it's not an issue for me. I used to do it beforehand. When I didn't do such colourful looks. little bit of that moss I think just for where it goes into the navy at the edge there using my fingers but at the moment I can because obviously I had to cut my nails down to try and stop me from gouging myself at night. So yeah, 
been a bit of a bit of a rough few weeks to be honest. But you know. I'd start having actor meals every day as well because um <laughs> The other penicillin is affecting my IBS, so yay for one medication giving you side effects for another thing. It's just marvellous, marvellous. Okay, well, I like that. Right, I'm going to pause you, my lovelies, and I am going to pop some foundation on and some base products and I will be back to finish off this eye look. Uh, I've got a bit of a while now before I can chat to you again but for you my darlings it's going to be absolutely instant. Hey my lovelies, okay I'm going to give this Colourpop Clear Feather Wax a go on my brows today, as you can see, I've not even tried it yet. So I'm going in with my spoolie. Because one thing I, although I love the soap brow, if I get hot, I do find that it tends to lose some of its grip. So, let's see if this clear feather wax will give me the same effect as you can see initially I'm just brushing it up and then I'm going up and across sweep it out. See the difference? Sorry, I'm not chatting very much, am I? Because normally I do my brows off camera. So I'm not used to chatting while I do them. Okay. seems to have given me the right effect anyway. Now I'm going to use the other end to colour them in. Um, I did use pomades for quite a while but the issue I was having is that Beauty Base seemed to stop doing the, um, the coloured pomade. I don't know if could get them, which is frustrating as hell. So, right, I'm going to go into Ivy. And this, dear ones, is how I do my brows.
And of course the beauty of doing them like this with powder is that you know it's going to match your makeup look perfectly because you're using the same palette. Lovely job turning up. And this is basically my preferred method of doing my brows now. It's so much easier than pomade and of course being powder rather than a cream it doesn't go off quite as quickly which is always great. Because obviously creams do have a limited shh, lifespan. I mean, so does powder technically, but you know, if you spritz your palettes once a month, with the ones that you've used, with like an alcohol spray, it's not going to affect the palette, but it will kill any germs that are on there. So, you know, come see, come saw, Rodney. Right, going back in with the flat brush that I used for the shimmers. I think actually I'm going to go into that bottom row, the uh, the warm row. I'm going to pick up raw, just run that along the lower lash line. been so frustrating I've seen so many people that have got this palette and I'm like because ah, I don't watch other people's reviews before I use a palette because I don't want to risk being influenced by their opinion so I've got a whole lot of films in my watch later so I can see if anybody else is going to look any similar to this. I'd imagine someone would have done. I can't be the only person to think of this colour combination. I haven't decided yet which colour I'm going to use in terms of highlight. Um, now I'm going in with this brush that I used for the blue and no actually I'm going to go in with a slightly smaller brush. I'm going to go in with this is a Voldemorphe. It's an M321. And make sure any previous colour is definitely off of it. And I'm going to dip into Poppy. Raw is a sort of deep burgundy red, whereas Poppy is a proper true sort of fire engine scarlet red. And I'm just going to use that. buff along the lower lash line. with 
the latest Ofra that I've got, which is the Mother Earth highlighter. It's meant to be a green shift, which in the camera it looks green, but when you look at it in real life it looks pink. I don't know if it'll... No, it's not going to show the shift at all, is it? It's really weird. And again I'm going in with a this is an M149. Pop a little bit of this up under the tail of my brow. And then I'll make it in the corner. And as you know, I like to bring mine along and just blend it in <clears throat> with whatever colour I've put under my eye. Okay, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to lob some mascara on, pop that highlight on my cheeks and everywhere, put some lippy on, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look. Again, for you, instant. I am back. This is my finished look. Um, I use the Mother Earth highlighter. I love Ofra highlighters, they have fast become my favourites. Um, the mascara that I used today is that e.l.f. Lash It Loud. Still not sure how I feel about that one yet, I'm reserving judgement. The lipstick, now I hated the NYX lingerie lipsticks, they were so dry. You put them on and it was like something that just sucked all the moisture out of your lips. Um, but apparently this new range, the Lingerie XXL, is meant to be much more comfortable. I will admit, it's not sticky. No transfer. And it does actually feel comfortable. This is shade Unlaced, if you were wondering. So. What are my initial thoughts on the Wilderness Palette? I really like it. Um, I love the colour scheme. I think this row is going to stop me from buying the Colourpop <clears throat> nine pan teal. Although, I am so, so tempted. Uh, but I think I'm going to be able to resist because I've got this now. I love this grungy green. Can't wait to get into those. These blues would be a nice fresh look, I think. Um, and again, the, the green and reds will play really well at Christmas. So this, to me, it covers sort of spring, summer, autumn, winter almost. Or fall, as some of you would call autumn. So... If you haven't got this, and you like the colour scheme, I'd say it's worth your money. I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far. So, there we go. Right, uh, what do you think of this finished look? Would you have gone for these colours, or would you have gone for something different? I just Every time I look in the, in the viewfinder, all I can see this bloody rash on my chest. Oh well, it'll, it'll get better, I'm sure. Um, as I was saying, what did you think? Do you like? Do you not like? It's a very me look this, isn't it? Let's be honest. I have a very classic look. Um, and it's usually lots of colours. Which, lots of colours. I mean, I've got four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colours on my eyes. Nine if you include the highlighter in the inner corner. Um, 
but I'm actually really, really liking it. Uh, hopefully it'll wear as well as the other palettes of theirs have that I have got. So, right. Uh, if you are a regular viewer, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. But they're leaving me in your feed, so it's not obvious you've been deleted. It's also worth double checking your notification status because a lot of people are finding, including me, that it keeps getting knocked back to personalised uh, rather than all, which means uh, I personally don't get any notifications. So do double check those. If you are new here and you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Um, this is, it's a pretty good indication of what you're going to get from me. I blether on about all kinds of everything. Remind me of you. Um, occasionally break into song. Uh, <laughs> my mind wanders off by itself for a while. It usually comes back, but there are times that I completely lose my train of thought. So, if you like the madness and craziness that is this channel, it would be awesome if you would love to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. It's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, you turn it grey. Once you've hit it, you ring that bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will pull their finger out and actually send you some. In the meantime, I have an awful lot of other films you can watch. Um, I've got all kinds of things from first impressions and tutorials like this, uh, challenges, tag films, collaborations, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them, so you know you 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 should be able to find something to interest you. Uh, that being the case, if you're looking for a little bit of me time, I've said it for what feels like time immemorial. But grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, settle down with your coffee and your custard cream, or whatever your drink and nibble of choice is. Steady. And just sit back and indulge. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.